Hello, I'm Roger Balance and I'm a historical interpreter here at the Patspahe Recreated Town Site at the Jamestown Settlement. And today we're going to be working on a Palatin feather mantle. This is the feather mantle that's actually being worked on currently, um, and it's being made with the smaller tail feathers from wild turkeys. So um, here the mantle is being constructed first by creating a plant fiber based netting, which is going to be made by first going out and harvesting the plants necessary for producing the netting. So typically uh, a nice plant that's going to produce nice soft cordage so it's not uh, an irritant to the skin. It's going to be nice and comfortable to wear. Uh, so this um, mantle typically you'd see being made with things like uh, dogbane, milkweed, or nettle fiber. Once you get all those plants you can process them up and uh, twist that fiber into the cordage and then you'll actually be making the netting. Um, that netting is really uh, not that complicated to produce. It's being made uh, a lot pretty much the same way that you're seeing a lot of your basic fishing nets that are being produced here. The same way, same kind of method. Um, but uh, on this one, uh, obviously it's a little bit smaller than what you'd see. That netting is a lot tighter. Uh, and that's because you want those feathers to overlap very nicely and fit together really nice. So here on this mantle, we have a nice graduation of the feathers. So essentially what you're trying to do is kind of take these feathers, uh, and not always, but kind of take them the way they came off the bird and put them on the netting. So that way, again, you get that nice overlap effect where the feathers fit in together really nicely and they look really nice and will produce you know, some nice patterns and things. Uh, because turkeys, they kind of they get a bad rap. They, <laughs> most of them think it's pretty, pretty drab, but if you look up here, once we've uh, started getting into those even smaller feathers, you see there's a lot of iridescence, some, some gold and greeny coppery colors that uh, start to come through versus the, just the basic browns and uh, the little black lines that you see in the tips of the feather. So once I actually get up to this section of the mantle, uh, most of the mantle itself will actually start turning primarily iridescent um, with that goldish coppery uh, color that's coming through. Um, the mantle itself is an item of clothing that is fairly practical. Honestly, the English describe them uh, as being tightly woven, uh, handsome items that are uh, exceedingly warm. And the way this is going to work is because uh, the mantle uh, is actually kind of acting like a light jacket. Uh, what's happening is the netting that we talked about earlier is that base, uh, and you're sewing a feather into every single knot in that net. And what's happening is you're creating um, essentially a down blanket that's going to be up against you uh, on this side of the mantle. Uh, and then on the reverse side, or the pretty side as I like to call it, you create this kind of uh, overlap shingle type effect of uh, sort of a shell that just locks in all of that heat uh, that's in that mantle that your body is producing. So that's going to be what actually helps insulate it uh, and keep you warm. Uh, and so that's how it actually works as a functional garment. Um, you can see uh, mantles like this being uh, worn uh, quite a bit, uh, but these mantles uh, can vary quite a bit as well. So you're not going to just be restricted to uh, a, a turkey feather mantle like this one. You can see mantles being produced uh, and even you see documentation of mantles not just being worn by the tribes here, but uh, up and down the East Coast and seeing a variety of feathers being used. Primarily they talk about turkey, um, but in this area uh, there's a very good example of another one that was made from the bright blue feathers that come from uh, mallard duck wings. And that one was uh, a feather uh, mantle or more commonly known to these tribes as Putawas um, that would belong to the wife of one of the Werewances, uh, with his name being Pipsico. Unfortunately, they don't give us her name in the documentation. This mantle here um, is a relatively small mantle. Um, it's uh, just going to be a waist-length mantle, 
Uh, and with this mantle here, again, we're using those uh, smaller tail feathers from wild turkeys. Uh, but even with this mantle being a relatively small mantle, uh, you're seeing uh, over 800, closer to 900 feathers being used in this mantle by the time it's going to be fully completed. Uh, so we're talking a, a whole lot of, uh, a lot of feathers there. Uh, that's probably uh, by the time you sort through them and get the feathers you really want to use to produce any type of patterning or making sure that the feathers are in good enough quality that you want to use them for this mantle, uh, you're probably talking a good, uh, 10, maybe 15 different turkey tails that are actually going to have to be gone through and sorted out uh, so that you have the feathers you need to produce this mantle. I hope you enjoyed that video and please remember to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.